I've been thinking about getting my own little studio at home. Have you? Mm-hmm. I'd be glad to chat with you about what we do around here at okay. Dead Badger Radio. I'd like to do sermons. Yes. Well, for a couple hundred bucks, you're all set. Oh, thanks. <laughs> all right, Jay. Um, in the in the continuum of, of conservative, liberal, or conservative, progressive Christianity, a lot of emerging church people, and you uh, in particular, are often now categorized as being in, on the liberal continuum. Yeah. I, I wonder how you feel about that, first of all. Because I don't think you are. I right. think um, I think you are a, I, I think you take the Bible um, uh, as an important part of your life and you've concluded from the Bible that God's on the side of everyone without exception. Right. It's curious to me that that gets coined as liberal. I know. And, and the I fact wonder- that, yeah, I mean, I came up reading very conservative like I did, like Zondervan school books yes. that were sold mm-hmm. to Christian. You know, I mean, it yes. wasn't like I was out reading like the liberal, mm-hmm. you know, the whatever, the. But I ask people to ask questions, and, and people ask, like, how do you feel about now being a liberal as compared, you know, having grown up the way you were? And I, there's a lot of that narrative now, yeah. right? Like, people are like, I was raised a conservative, and now I'm not a conservative anymore. I don't know that that's a helpful continuum, because I, I, just, think it's, I just think it's another way we, narrow, we narrowly define people. I just think you've come to certain conclusions in your life that um, are about the grace of God, yep. which in interestingly is now pitched as being the liberal side probably because of the issue of homosexuality right right i mean that's probably it maybe so, yeah no you're right i mean it's weird though because the idea of grace is is kind of what got me on it i say it's a slippery slope and i mm-hmm. guess they're right you know this idea of grace and i was coming from the bible originally as you know it was it was you know infallible you know what i mean it was like no contradictions you right. know and, so that would make me study another verse. When I realized one verse was contradicting another, I would have to go in and study the history and the background and then get out the Greek and the Hebrew. And I'd have like four books out trying to just understand like what it was in the Greek they said. Yeah, trying you know? to reconcile these yeah, disparate like, ideas. Huh? Yeah, yeah and, 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 and that's where it grew from. Because you, t- you, you were under the, um, you approached it as it, it, this all makes sense somehow and yeah. I need to get it. I need to figure the And by the studying it, I realize it doesn't all make sense somehow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's this, the problem is, is a lot of these uh, folks who get very upset about that stuff is I'm like, you know, you said study the Bible. Yeah. You know, I study the Bible and you don't like what I've got. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and, and, it, and it's really tough. And it's tough because a lot of the times the people I'm arguing with, which I try not to do as much, are people who just take the Bible for face value. You know, and when you start to understand the culture, I mean, like the culture of Rome and what was going on in Rome. And then when you understand like the, the actual laws that Rome had on people, mm-hmm. uh. you know what I mean? And, and that takes that Roman ones verse that everybody uses on homosexuality right. mm-hmm. is that there was a law against homosexuality in Rome. Unless you were a man could have sex with a non man, and a non man was someone underage or a uh, slave or a temple prostitute or a eunuch. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm gonna get a little graphic here. And the man, uh, the man could not be penetrated, he had to be the penetratee, hmm. you know. And so, th- when you study these things, you realize, okay, this is what Paul was talking about, you know. And, and you know, not to get into a radical thing, people can yeah. argue it and that, but the idea was is 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 that when you understand like the actual legal laws and mm-hmm. the customs of the time, it's really a beautiful book. Mm-hmm. And you realize a lot of that stuff was just you know cultural, just cultural relevance. And sometimes we've taken that two thousand year old cultural ideals and tried to make them into law, and yeah, they don't and, work. And maybe even mm-hmm. selected one or two of those that we would like to hold that we'd like yeah. to hold fast to. So so I. I mean, I, I, I'm not asking you to put yourself on the continuum of, of liberal or, or not, but I know there's, a, for, for most people, being conservative or liberal yeah, or being uh, evangelical or anything like that, that's a complex cultural category, yeah. right? Like when you're liberal, there's a whole set of things that, that tend to come with that, right? Yep. There's a, places you eat and, and ideas that you banter around and things that you read and yep. like there's a whole... There's a whole way in the in the same way that, you know, for for any subculture in our society, there's a number of forces that prop up that cult, that that subculture. And there's kind of a liberal subculture. Yeah. Um, and there's a religious liberal no, subculture. Yeah, I know. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we now you and I move around this thing and I move. I, I feel like a like a, a non-cultural native to that world. Right. Well, like yeah. I was raised an apartment complex kid 
in Golden Valley, Minnesota, right? Like okay. to a dad who was a prisoner and to a, you know, a, a mom and a dad who didn't graduate from high school. You don't, you don't get to play in the, in the, in the liberal pedigree world there without yeah. like you, you would, you'd have to, you know, I would have had to gone to certain schools or something <laughs> or right. So it, it's not a natural response to me to be like, Oh no, I just kind of function in, in liberal no, intelligence and liberal either. subculture. And I don't think you do either. So how, how does that go for you having to be a, 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 a religious voice within that, within that, that world? Is that, it's it's I'd say it's as tough, if not tougher than when I was in the doing the conservative stuff, because at least with the conservative folks, they would come up and, you know, and they would argue. But I felt like they would argue a little bit more. At least they were saying, like, God doesn't believe this. I, I think when you when you argue with liberals, it, it becomes very self-righteous hmm. stuff. And that's really hard for me to deal with. Now, I grew up I mean, since I was a teenager, I was very li- liberal politically, mm-hmm. you know, like I would work on campaigns cause I couldn't vote, you know, so I'd make sell stickers for Bill Clinton and all that crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but in this liberal kind of circles is like, you know, when I first started sp- speaking to a lot of these affirming churches, I realized I was the most conservative person there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even when I speak at sometimes mainline denominations, people are like, man, you use a lot of Bible. And I'm going like, really? Um, and so they, you know, in some ways that may be conservative or liberal. I don't know. I just feel like liberals, there aren't, it feels like there's not a whole lot of loyalty in, mm. in, in, in the liberal movement and everybody's willing to throw everybody else under the bus in the name of social justice mm. because there's a lot of hurt people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that's very, and I'm a hurt person as well, mm-hmm. but it's very hard to, to, to get those waters because it seems like the, in the liberal community, you, you, they want you to cover every single base. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you don't cover one base, you're completely taken out. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's it's tough. It's it pe- is tough. Pe- people are mm-hmm. people are. It just doesn't seem like people are ever happy. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I guess that's you have to come to a point where you're comfortable not making people, where you're not trying to make people happy. And if people don't like you, that's okay. Mm-hmm. And it isn't. In, 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 I'm not trying to be hard on, on liberal subculture at all. Like I get it. It's got its own thing, and I just feel some. I, I play in that world, but I feel sort of out of it. Uh, out of it at times um but it's it is curious to me that in that world there is there is a kind of righteousness not righteousness wrong word there's a kind of pedigree that you have to have there's certain things that you have to say and hold to um and have thought about to be okay in that world right what well, and that's why I left the conservative church. Yes. And I think that's why you have most of the emergent folks mm-hmm. left, you know, the conservative, like middle class mm-hmm. church mm-hmm. that they were in because there was mm-hmm. no structure to move right or left. And so mm-hmm. they left. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's where I think I, a lot of the emergent church comes from is, is kind of saying we don't want this structure over here. So we dived into this other pool. Yeah. And it's like, oh, oh this structure is here in another way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's curious. It, mm-hmm. it does feel that way. I mean, there's, um, there's, there's, there's sort of a, and I think this is true of any, of, of any grouping of people that, that you're always going to compare yourself to the other group that you're not, right? Mm-hmm. That's not a, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's probably an evolutionary thing and it's a helpful social organizing principle. We just have to watch it very closely and yeah. be, be sure that it doesn't become harmful to people. Um, and it certainly happens within, within r- religious culture. When you're sort of a open, anything goes sort of person because, but you've gotten there not out of some sort of liberal or libertarian sensibilities, but out of um, because the grace of God uh, is is equally distributed upon all of us, and we don't know who the best one is, so we should probably let everybody have a shot at this thing. Um, that kind of sensibility will wind you up in some very open places, yeah, but for really different reasons, mm-hmm. for really different rationale than um, you know. I mean, I think what, like, you, what I you mean, might end up to in some. I think good examples like when I was at Wild Goose, you know, I realized that there was a lot of conversations going on, and you know, I was so happy to have all these liberal Christians in one area because I'd never been to a liberal Christian festival. Mm-hmm. I'd sp- I used to make my living speaking at festivals until I came gay affirming, and then they said no more. Um, so it was nice to be at this festival, but there was I I could hear complaining from both sides, mm-hmm. you know, and and it was just really tough for me. It's like because. I felt like I jumped into the love, the liberal world 
because it was a safer place, Mm -hmm. you know, but you know, if you, if you give God a gender, if you've, you know, or something like that, someone could just jump all over you. You know, I remember right when I, when I first became affirming and I wasn't really worried about, uh, what is it? Pronouns? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) You know, I wasn't really worried about that. Mm -hmm. And I remember I spoke at this church and, um, a a lady came up to me afterwards and said, why did you use, you know, this block A, B and C and D. And I'm a pastor, you know, of of the, uh, there was an MCC pastor and I was going like, I was so hurt because I had just kind of given up my whole ministry Mm -hmm. and I just Mm -hmm. had to let my whole staff go because I took this stand. And then I was like, picked apart because I wasn't saying the words right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or because you called God a he. Because or like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and I would just read out of the Bible. Now I'm very sensitive to that now. Mm-hmm. And I understand where she's coming from at this point, but at the time I didn't. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem is we don't take into consideration each other's stories or where we're coming right. from. Mm-hmm. That's you where know, that relational piece is really, really important. Like back to Romans where there's this list of names you said last night seems like these early Christians were on a first name basis with each other when we don't have that kind of oh, we should maybe hold back and not say something to someone if we don't have a relationship or if we haven't taken mm-hmm. any time to build any of that and just jump on an agenda or jump on somebody because of their agenda. Well, I think Facebook is and, and, and Twitter and those type of things have made this it's made it worse painfully in some ways. Easy. Yeah, I mean, painfully easy to do that. And we just mm-hmm. don't realize, like, you know, I, someone was arguing with me the other day about um, uh, white privilege and stuff like that, you know. And white privilege is, is a very, very hard thing to look at. You know, you, mm-hmm. you, if you're white, you don't realize you have it a lot of the time. And it can be a blind spot, you know, and we're trying to get in this conversation. But it was as though I should have had this whole thing figured out from the very beginning, mm-hmm. you know. And, and, yeah. and those are really tough things to do is, like, to be in this world where people expect you to, like, know everything a b and c Mm -hmm. and say well this isn't enough and i always find that the people who are complaining i want to be like well you got to make the change but you're not going to make a change this way or they get Mm -hmm. offended Mm -hmm. when you push back Mm -hmm. or you argue with them Mm -hmm. and i'm going like wait a second you know if this is your mission and you're going to say this kind of stuff towards me we should be able to have Mm -hmm. a heated conversation Mm -hmm. because this is a spirited conversation because that's just what this is this stuff's going to bring out Mm -hmm when we make assumptions over each other and um, and that's the issue there is I think we just assume way too much we and we don't realize we all come from different backgrounds yeah and I think we don't realize that we're when we've I really do think we forget that we're all different parts of the body Mm -hmm. and so when I hear people you know say well the emergent church is nothing but all white males and I go to this church and this is a good, you know, we have, we have a good mixture of people and this and that. And I go, yeah. well, we're all part of the body of Christ. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking like, why are you saying, well, this is the church that's right. And this group is wrong mm-hmm. when we're supposed to be one group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, if you were to borrow that body metaphor, it'd be like the hand saying, well, look, I can move all over the place. The elbow <laughs> just got one, just got one, one motion. No, that's exactly. it. I mean, you guys and your, your one move kind of ability <laughs> elbow. Yeah, it's and, and this is the kind of thing, and I hear this a lot now in the in the kind of progressive Christian world that I run around in, right? Um, it, when I was hanging around with evangelicals, and I was only I was privileged to only be around sort of healthy, um, uh, positive, uh, outreaching evangelicals. Not the back in the eighties and through the nineties, evangelicalism wasn't what it is now, and right. it, it didn't have to fight the battles with the Southern Baptists that it's having to fight now. So it wasn't closing ranks around certain theologies and so on. It was very, it was very sort of um, exploratory and innovative kind of kind of movement. But when I was in that world, nobody was ever trying to up one another on who was more conservative. Maybe people were upping one another on whose church was bigger. Right. Right. That yeah. was kind of a big thing in the world as around. But now in the progressive world that I'm in, I, it's remarkable to me how people will say things like they'll come to the church that Victoria and I are part of uh, and they'll say things like to somebody else like, oh, I'm at a church where we're, we're actually way more liberal than 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 Solomon's porch. Right. Like right. this kind of thing. Like, Some first of all, no, you're not. And secondly, <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, why are you even saying that? What, on what yeah. possible what basis? Like, really, matter? there's some measurement of that. What what are you or, or, or people will will say this kind of stuff, yeah. you know, like I've 
been mentioning in the in the elections that um, I haven't lost a presidential presidential election since 1992 for the person that I voted for. Right. So I feel pretty good. And people are like, oh, that's an, you voted for Bush. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. I mean, literally, there's people who are like, dude, I, do dude, I, I honestly, do I can't even. Might have been a sidekick. I sidekick can't said even. That <laughs> I can't even think about listening to you anymore on this stuff. Beca- like, right? Like, there yeah, is. Yeah, I'm a leaving clo- right now. Actually. There is a closing <laughs> of ranks, right? Yeah. Like, it is a curious. It is a, <laughs> it is a curious thing. And when I was with the evangelicals, those kind of healthy evangelicals. I didn't experience that as much right. of yeah. sort of like you could say something or not hold to something and be kicked out as quickly. Now, well, maybe yeah. that's because I, I wasn't hanging around the, the, some of the conservative the people cons- telling me it was always ones. the liberal yeah. well, who was running was the Antichrist. You know, oh, like, really? yeah, I yeah. mean, I remember when I was working at this Christian television station mm-hmm. when Bill Clinton was running first time for president and I was all about him and they were like. That's the Antichrist, mm. son. And I'm going like, really? It's like every Democrat who wins office is the Antichrist. Yeah, really. It's really amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, that's politics is a whole nother thing. I mean, it's almost like sports now. I, I, I just <laughs> I can't even stand it. And I never liked sports growing up because of the competition. Mm-hmm. And now I'm being turned off from politics in a lot of ways because of the competition. And I'm, I find my job harder when I feel like I'm having to compete with folks. And so I'm really my choice of, of, of my life is uh, trying to make a decision daily is not to be competing with mm. folks. And I guess what we're talking about yeah, is human like nature. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, w- you mm-hmm. know, it is human nature for sure, but human nature tends to be particular parts of the human natural way or nature yeah. is cultivated inside of well, certain And it's the church too. You got to remember mm-hmm. the church That's draws right. people who are hurt and yeah. you know, and I'm in the church and was drawn to, to mm-hmm. d- 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 church because of grace because I was hurt huh. and I saw grace and grace was very healing to me yeah and I wanted to share that with other people mm-hmm. um you know and, and I thought hurt, grace was enough that hurt gets tripped up and then all of a sudden people mm-hmm. are arguing about things that probably have nothing to do with what the argument is about it's probably about something personal yeah mm-hmm. like we were saying before but people don't want to admit the personal thing mm-hmm. because it seems like it compromises the mm-hmm. theology or the argument or whatever and instead, it's probably the most essential part. No, you're right. I mean, I find I find myself getting into conversations yeah. where I'm mm-hmm. defending, like I'll defend the emergent church, or like, or you know, Brian McLaren, or or, or you know, or these, you know, mm-hmm. you or or Tony, or you know, and things like this, and, and 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 people get upset about it, and they say these things, and I'm like, you know, but you don't understand. I know these people. I know that they want more of this. I, I, and at Christianity 21, you know, I talk about that all the mm-hmm. time, and I'm like, you know, it's like everybody has this really short term memory of what has been done in the past. Mm-hmm. And I'm always trying to be like, you know, we're, we're, we all want this. We're all trying to do this. Mm-hmm. We're all thinking progressively. It's, you know, you can't, you know, but, but they don't see it every day or it's not yes. in their face. Mm-hmm. They think automatically like we're the old, uh, someone said we looked like the old guard or something like that. Yeah. You know, and for me, I'm like, yeah, I, I think there should be more than like five white guys on a, on a panel, definitely. But I grew up where it was five old white guys on a panel <laughs> who all agreed. So the first time I saw five people on a panel disagreeing, I was like, whoa, this is liberal and crazy. You know, because we all come from different areas. And so I think if we could be conscious of one another. Right. And that's why I like the emerging language just as a just as a phrase and as a notion that that people are growing and becoming and, and changing and that. I find myself, and that's what I like liked about the word progressive before it was just a swap for the word liberal. That one was progressing. That you started from somewhere that you almost didn't have, almost normally didn't have any responsibility for where you started. None of us mm-hmm. did, right? Yeah. We just got our start from Conditions other people's. Not of our choosing. And then we're progressing from there. We're 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 in motion. We're in movement. We're in dynamism from there to something else. Which I think is sort of at the essence of grace, right? Um, I mean, that that feels to me like that's what it is. That there's a, a sense of becoming and developing and growing, and something's yeah. something's going on. All right, I got a couple of questions from people who have written to us from um, uh, on, on Twitter. Did anybody and write Facebook. anything now? Is anybody watch? Is this live or is this on tape? It's both. Oh, live so and tape. Yeah, if you're watching right now, um, message if message really us. Offensive. Message message Send me it. right now. Um, all right. Uh, you feel offended? This is no, from, I, said they, I said if you feel this offended. This is from Clay. You know, I'm, and I'm, <clears throat> I, I, Clay um, must follow you somewhat and know that you, you've thought a lot about the issue of homosexuality in Christianity and the role of uh, the homosexual 
debate inside of Christianity. He says, why, Jay, do you feel that there is some sort of a need to add the term homosexual to the Bible when it wasn't in any translation before? And I think he means sort of before 1954. Yeah, I I, I believe it's And do you feel that any publisher would ever take that word out in the future if the church were to become more inclusive and supportive of all lifestyles? So there's a little background to that, which maybe you can tell people. Well, I mean, yeah, well, the new... Well, yeah, I mean, it was like the late 40s, early 50s when the word homosexual was added to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it would have used other phrases, fornication or a man with a man. But the term homosexual, which was really a late 1890s anthropological term, was created for anthropology purposes. But most of the time, I mean, in the Bible, when it's talking about it, it's talking about prostitution or rape or things like, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, domination. So it's like really awful stuff. And Mm -hmm. And when you compare people that I care about and love who are in a relationship to that, it makes me crazy. Mm -hmm. Or you just like, well, it's just like anything else, like a drug addict. I'm going, Mm -hmm. okay, that's really offensive um i i use the um uh nrs new revised standard version and they don't have it in there anymore Mm -hmm. um and they did an oxford edition the oxford annotated or an whatever Mm -hmm. bible Mm -hmm. they actually like have even in the in the in the in the uh notes have made it clear that these verses have been misused which i find amazing Mm -hmm. um especially because that's also the the bible choice of the catholic church um Mm -hmm. Also, but you know, I think like the New Living has it. I mean, I, I have a New Living at home where you can actually look up in the front and it says homosexuality and it has all the verses underneath it. Huh. I stopped using that. That book reads really well, but I stopped using that translation. And it's such an easy translation to read. When you have dyslexia, it's it, you know, the New American Standard version can you know, really you're saying tough. something, it sounds like a question, mm-hmm. and you're making a statement. You know, yeah. the New Living is just like simple mm-hmm. but still somewhat accurate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I stopped using it because I felt like I, I, I wasn't being true to my LGBTQ brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. And I think the only way we can do it is by writing letters to these publishers saying, you know, we don't want this there anymore. Mm. At the same time, though, you've got, you know, the word hell has been used to uh, as a blanket term, yeah. too, in, in the New Testament. Um, that, you know, it would be nice if they changed each one of those. So at what point are you, are you, you know... Because sometimes it's like garbage pit. And yeah, um, you know, or southwest mm-hmm. of Jerusalem, or mm-hmm. you know, and, and and but so it's it's very interesting. And I think if we're if the Bible is a public book and everyone's going to read it, and if the publishers are into it for really wanting people to read the Bible and not just make a buck, which I understand it's a business and you want to make a buck, um, they should make it so that it is clear enough for mm-hmm. people to understand mm-hmm. and not rush to judgment. Because I have so many people say, well, it says right here and right here. You know, and I'm going like, I've spent yeah. years and years and countless amount of hours right. studying these verses. And you're telling me because you see it in front of you that it's this way. And I'm like, listen, I've done so much boring, time-consuming work to study this stuff mm-hmm. to know that it's not here. Because when I first came to this conclusion, I was still in the idea of, I wouldn't say I was a, a complete literalist, but that the Bible had to say it was okay. Yeah, I do believe that you can be a literalist or a fundamentalist and be gay affirming, mm-hmm. without a doubt. For sure. And so that's where I had In to fact, come to that point. It might be the more consistent position. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I, I now, know that sounds bizarre to people who don't hear, but if you understood that kind of biblicist kind of way, you mm-hmm. really would. Yeah. have to conclude such you, a thing. You would it have seems to, because right. it's not there. Closely your mm-hmm. Translation. Mm-hmm. It, it's not there. How does the TNIV fall from this? You know, I, I don't, I don't, really, I don't sure. really, I don't I don't read the new NIV. I haven't read it in a while. I have a copy. Yeah. I have a copy. I used to be like a Bible translation freak at Zoic and have like mm-hmm. 50 Bibles, but my house started to look like, you know, a Christian bookstore, so I finally had to just get rid of most of them. Okay, here's another question so somebody asked. This person wants to remain um, without their without their name. Uh, the, the, he gives a little background to this to this question. He was part of a church, and they had an ad in the church newsletter, an uh, electronic newsletter, that was um, about the gay marriage issue in his state, and it was against gay marriage. And he said, "Hey, look, there's lots of people in this church that have different views on this. Do you think we could have?" Uh, and add in the next newsletter that would also be supportive of gay marriage. And they put one in, but it was much smaller (laughs) and um, was sort of, um, he he felt was a little bit patronizing. And since then, things that this fellow has done at this church have been 
uh, curtailed a bit. He used to preach, hasn't been invited to since this all happened. Used to lead music, hasn't been invited to. And so he's asking of you, Jay, Uh Jay, should I? And he gives three choices. Should I? These are obviously things he's confronted. And he wants to you know, put out. Should he confront the the, the minister? And he's concerned he's not going to get a, a, a honest answer about what went on anyway. Should he stick with the church anyway and say like he's a big boy and he should you know live in a community where not everyone's going to respond the way he wants to, or should he consider going somewhere else because he has this growing uh, discomfort with other things that are going on as well? So what does a guy like this do? Uh, mm-hmm. From the perspective of of Jay, the you know the the, the world of Jay, well, the if world he's, of Jay, if he's a Jayist, I would say if you're a Jayist, I would say you have to do A and then figure out if you're going to do B or C. But I would you're saying confront the pastor. Or something yeah, he's gotta, I mean you don't have to confront bring him, but you can bring it to him. But I think what we realize is that what we forget to realize is that like the fact that he had a little ad in there, mm-hmm. that's a huge step from mm-hmm. where the church was. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean when. When I start seeing more of my LGBT brothers and sisters speaking, you know, like at at Wild Goose the first year, I was like, this is, you know, we're starting to make a movement. You know, a lot of people said, well, it's not enough or it's too much. And I'm Mm -hmm. going like, we've just got to keep moving ahead because when we start to be inclusive, it just takes off. Mm -hmm. And so when you get a little thing like that, even it still might be to someone in that congregation, that battle that he he won. I would say that was a win, even though it was small, mm-hmm. to the people in the congregation going like, okay, I'm safe for a moment. Hmm. So I think if there's a church is willing to do that, then he might, they might be willing to have a conversation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. about it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, I think silence is the worst thing you can hmm. do. So I think he should probably bring it up. And then if it doesn't work, then you, you know, move on mm-hmm. and let him know why you're moving on. And maybe as much as possible to try to come into the conversation with that sense, like, I want to understand the minister's perspective. I want to offer some of where I'm at. Because I think that this notion of confrontation is more walls, even though people are maybe talking to one another. Sometimes it's it's just so it can really shut down any opportunity Mm. to try to understand each other. And we've got to look, I think, yeah, I mean, I think if we look at it like from an area where we didn't understand mm-hmm. before, something that we grew on or something we were confronted on, and, you know, when you love your neighbor as yourself, think, okay, now how had that been done? If, if how, w- how could I wish it would have been done better or was yeah. it done perfect or right? Mm-hmm. And then say, okay, I'm going to take my experience and use it with this yeah. person this way mm-hmm. from what I've learned. If that um, were me, what would be most helpful to me? Yeah. You know, and I mean, when people, you know, I like to give honest answers because I felt like I grew up either not getting honest answers in the church or saying, you know, don't ask that question. Mm-hmm. You'll understand one day, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of yeah. thing. You know, mm-hmm. okay. So, so for the two of you, I'd be interested in both of your responses. I, I haven't been through the, what I'm about to ask you before, so I don't know. I haven't been through it on the, on the, the personal side. When does someone, how does someone decide and when should they leave the church they're going to, to go to another church where, <laughs> the pastor is going to agree with them more, <laughs> right? Like, like wh- how does someone make that call of like the pastor here? I talk, like say this, this fellow, just yeah, as yeah. an example, mm-hmm. talks to him, realizes the pastor's like, Hey, I, that's not where I kind of am. And this is why it's hard because I don't want to have to defend this argument. So we put it in there, but it was sm- like, what if that's the answer, right? Like right, yeah. I disagree with you on this. Mm-hmm. So someone confronts the pastor and the pastor's like, I just think, you know, I just think differently on this really important issue to me. And obviously it's important to you. Mm-hmm. When is it good, right, fair, or how does someone make a decision about leaving the, the church that they're at to go to um, another one where the pastor's more like them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, have you have you ever that. had to do that? I don't know if you've been through that. I know well, you've had to change your churches. Your question but. Pre- presupposes, yeah. I mean, we didn't we didn't leave our church of thirteen plus years, the church we thought we were going to grow old in, and that we had mm-hmm. enormously rooted. It was heartbreaking. We didn't leave because we disagreed with the pastor per yeah. se. We left because there were so many people arguing with one another that we were exhausted. Oh. Like we were just kind of standing back, watching all these people fight, saying we don't really care. Like, yeah. we don't really find ourselves over this side of the argument. Or this, we're, we're, we were trying to find out, what are they really fighting about? Mm-hmm. We spent years trying to figure that out. Yeah. And it didn't get sorted out, and we finally just got worn down. Yeah, the dynamism just changed in a way that you all 
Yeah, w- well, we were just, we didn't even realize one week we just had where we went to another church just because, I don't know, we woke up and we just were so heartbroken and we just didn't think we could go through another week. Mm-hmm. And when we went to this other church just to visit, we found that we didn't even really realize how bad off we were. Like, mm. we felt like we were in this deficit, this spiritual deficit. Yeah. And, and that for whatever reason, the community, hmm. I still don't to- understand it. This was quite a few years ago now because we've been at Solomon's Porch for three years and we looked for a church for two years. And we weren't looking for a place mm-hmm. where everybody agreed with us at mm-hmm. all. We were looking for a place where we could come with our doubts and our skepticism and our hurt and just as we were yeah. and be. Yeah. One of the first things I said about Solomon's Porch was I said, this is a place where you could break down and they won't kick you out. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you remember, Doug, but when we first came, we were asking a lot of questions. How do you guys deal with conflict? Because we had come <laughs> out yeah. of so much conflict. We were like, we get that there can be conflict. We want to know how people deal with it. So we weren't really looking for agreement or that. We were just looking for a place where we could rest and be and grow again. Yeah. And then... And I don't know for you, I, you know, I don't know what it's like if you're just yeah. looking for agreement. How does someone do that? I mean, you're you're a pastor of a church now, and so people come to you, I'm sure, and they'll ask you questions as they do us at Solomon's Porch, right? Mm-hmm. They'll ask us like, the, I know they're quizzing me yeah, on yeah, things, yeah. you know, because they want to know <laughs> that they align. And it's okay. Um, no, I mean, not, uh, they're not asking process questions. They're asking, what do you, fella, think about things? And they're trying to fetter that out, right? And they want to know because a lot mm-hmm. of people... Want to, and I've thought a lot about that. Like, would I go to a church where the pastor thought that women shouldn't be able to be in leadership? Mm-hmm. Right. I don't think I would go there. No. But I don't like the notion that I think I would only want to go to a church where I agree with the pastor. Like, because mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't want to lead a church where I think everybody agrees with me. Because what what good is that for for me? I mean, I, I yeah, I, I feel totally, <clears throat> I'd feel totally lost. But if, you're on a journey when you and you grow and you you then realize you're really in trouble, you, know, yeah. you know and you realize <laughs> that you know human rights and social justice issues yeah. are important to you. Um, equality. Mm-hmm of gender and race and sexuality yeah. is important to you, you're not going to be able to sit there every week and be like, oh, yeah, I want to, you know. Yeah. You're not going to go to a speech of the candidate you don't like and sit there on, on, on a weekly basis and just follow them around. Yeah. I mean, you might listen once or twice, mm-hmm. but you're not yeah. going to subscribe to that. But should we, I wonder? I don't know. This well, is, this, this, is, is, the, this is what I get like. a lot. <laughs> is I get people who tell me, like, the gay affirming thing is a lot of people are like, well, I'm in my church and I'm quiet and I don't say anything because I want to change things from the inside and I'm the little light of hope for the few people who are there. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and in some ways I want to just be like, start another church and take those four people with you. You know what I mean? Run. Yeah. Um, you know, mm. because it, it just can be such a toxic environment. Mm-hmm. Um, if the church, because it's sometimes the, the pastor is trying to create clones too, though. I know it's you know, and they want you to know. sign contracts and stuff that you won't oh, yeah. do certain things, and mm-hmm. you won't, and if you do, you're going to get disciplined. And mm-hmm. I don't know where that was in the Bible at all. Uh, yeah. I think ironically, when they use Matthew 18, they forget that the name of the book is named after a guy named Matthew, who Jesus was, you know, a tax collector. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, you know, so it's like the, it's 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 this type of thing where I I. I just think you have to, you know, you don't have to go to a church. You're never going to go to a church where the person agrees with you 100%. Mm-hmm. You might think they do, but when you get to know them, you know, mm-hmm. you know, I know a lot of people, you know, would probably be shocked that I spend a lot of time just sitting home and, and painting little pieces of things to clear my mind. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. out feeding the poor every night, mm-hmm. you know, but I've got people who do that. Now, what I've done is I've got a co-pastor, Reverend Vince Anderson, who's extremely liberal, extremely sensitive to a lot of these things. Me and him have butt heads on a lot of this stuff. You know, I'll be like, why are these people so sensitive? You know, and he'd be like, yeah. there's a reason, Jay, and A, B, and C, and D. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm going, oh, okay, well, maybe. And, and then I think sometimes we often come to a middle ground because we're kind of extreme in different areas. Um, and passionate about things. And that's great because people know that me and Vince don't agree on everything mm-hmm. that's at the church. Yeah, you and two don't even agree. Yeah, and we're co-pastors, mm-hmm. and we really try to do that. So you go to a church where you don't agree with the pastor. <laughs> I go to a yeah. church where I don't agree with the pastor. And you know, and, and, and still be in relationship. Yeah, and he's like, and, and, and he's the more, I would say he would be way more the shepherding pastor. I mean, he talks mm-hmm. and gets to, I'm, a, I'm, I'm reclusive, and I'm, I'm nervous, and I try to stay around as long as I can. But, yeah. you know, I have to go back and re-energize because, you know, I'm just a weird Whatever person. Whatever social disorder. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. exhausting. Yeah. I'm exhausted right now already. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, well, it is a complex thing. And, and I know for a lot of us who've started new churches, as you've done on a few occasions and I've done once, you're sort of the bright light for people who don't like their churches. And we get people, I'm sure you get it all the time too, who come rolling through because they're looking for churches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And sometimes it's just because life circumstance has, has made changes. They've moved, the church has moved, something happened. And it's fine. I don't think we have to stay at the same community for all of our lives, all of us. I mean, the people that are on this porch had better I'll hunt them down. But, <laughs> but I don't think everybody has to as a general yeah. rule, right? Um, but boy, there's this other thing where, um, and, and it's not like people are coming to the church to ask, like, what do I have to believe to belong here? Right. It's not my experience. Probably not your No, no, no. We don't, the run, I don't think we run that way. kind of church. Do you believe, pet leader, yeah. the way that I do? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're not, they're not wanting me to be their standard. They're wanting to be my standard. Right, right. right. Uh, it's a really interesting switch that this consumeristic attitude has brought, which I think might actually be a good side because church has bossed people around <laughs> for a long time around the world, telling people what they have to believe. Yeah. It's probably not a bad No, it's not a bad yang thing in the yin. I think it's probably be ba- I, I honestly think most pastors who are afraid to be gay affirming or afraid to be, you know, say well, you know, if they're a reformed person to say like listen women are equal and all this stuff. Yeah. They're afraid to say it because their congregation, they're afraid of their congregation. That's right. And so I That's always right. want to challenge congregation people to say you lead. Yeah. Well, yeah. You've mm-hmm. got to be the leaders. You've yeah. got to continue to talk to your yeah. leaders. Because they will eventually follow you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, or, or, or they don't and the church, you know, empties mm-hmm. out, whatever, or it just continues to go on and become 10,000 members, whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But, you know, pastors don't say things because, you know, once you start a church, you have bills to pay and then you have mortgages and you have all these things. And you have and a they, social responsibility. Yeah, you have a social responsibility yeah, and you do. start to get a little freaky freaky. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes you start to not lead, you know, instead yeah. you're afraid of everyone. And I think people need to make it clear to the pastors that, you know, you don't have to be afraid. I used to get like personally like freaked out when I thought when people left revolution, I thought it was sure. because of me, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I had to get over that. So now when people leave, I'm kind of like, Oh, you know, well, that's well, that great. Was probably trauma from when you mm-hmm. came out as your position. On I was like, I'm just a bad you, speaker. And you lost yeah. all your speech. I mean, I would suggest that that kind of yeah, understandable. And, and, but even before then, you know, people would always be like, you guys aren't a real church. You know, that yeah. kind of thing, because we oh, don't yeah. have like an hour of worship or 20 minutes of worship or five minutes of worship. You don't sing. Yeah, we don't sing or we don't, you know, and they're like, oh, you're not a real church. Or the my the, what scares me more than anything is people who come and go, I love this church. This is the most amazing thing I've ever been to. You are amazing. Yeah. I want to work with you. I want to live here. Yeah. I want to be part of it because those are the folks I'm going to disappoint mm-hmm. right off the bat mm-hmm. with, I know that they'll be gone. Or someone who comes and says, is this a safe place? I need a safe spot. You know, I'm like, well, you know, you know, <clears throat> when they start saying, you know, well, I, I can't be in an unsafe spot. What I realize is sometimes those people are so hurt that they actually are the ones who make the area more unsafe Mm-hmm. <clears throat> because of that concern, because they start to attack people saying, that's not unsafe, that's not, you know, and you're going mm-hmm. like, we live in a world where the world isn't safe, and if you mean safe, but like if not everybody's going to agree with you or you mm-hmm. can't have an argument, mm-hmm. yeah, then mm-hmm. this isn't a safe place because I want people to come in where we can have these exchanges and I want people to feel comfortable to have conversations and to bring their doubts or bring their beliefs. I mean, I would love it if I had a, a politically diverse church uh, of people and, um, you know, if someone's not, uh, an ally or affirming, you know, I, I hope they would come to the church and, and want to meet with me and talk to me about it. You know, I mean, I've got a few pastors that I meet with who don't agree with me and we have this conversation and I res- have so much respect for them now because we're having a conversation, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and we have, we have sometimes really stripped down tough, like, most people would leave crying conversations, mm-hmm. but you know we know that how important it is for both of us to work this out that we don't allow it to uh, sever the relationship. Well, Jay, thanks, thanks for, for being on the show. You're welcome. Thank you, Victoria. Uh, Jay, tell us, uh, are you, do you have do you have a new a new book coming out? Do you have yeah. you got something? You got something? I have a new book works? coming out in February. Ooh, called Faith, Doubt, and Other Lines I've Crossed. It's got three titles actually. Then I like that one. Walking with the unknown God is the subtitle. Well, we we were I was working with Wendy Grisham. Um, Faith, uh, doubt, and other lines I've crossed. Yes, and yeah. then the subtitle is Walking with the Unknown God. Mm-hmm. Well, me and Wendy were trying to come up with mm-hmm. an idea, and Pete gave us three, mm-hmm. and they decided to use all three. 
So I have three titles. Three subtitles? No, I mean, it's just a long title. But it's a great looking book. Uh-huh. My friend got to design the cover. Um, it's coming out in February. It's Jericho. coming out in February. It's Jericho It'll be Jericho. Book, Jericho. It? It's being uh-huh. published by Jericho Publishing. Mm-hmm. And I'm very, very excited about this book. Um, it is, it's, I'm not having, no, no, I don't have to tell any of my personal story in it anymore. <laughs> it's all about my theology and philosophy and things I've discovered about God mm. and my conflicts I've had and my thoughts on the scriptures. And, um, and I think I might lose some folks because of it, but I also might gain some folks. I mean, you'll read it and think, oh, this guy's a liberal, you know? But like we've mm. said, that's just a, a thing that we can mm. do. So that'll be out in February, Faith and Doubt, Another Lines I've Crossed. Um, it's not even, we don't have an ampersand though. So it's just faith, doubt. Is there a colon though? No, comma? nope, nope. So, no but, but the page is ripped in half. So it says, oh. no, not even a comma, just faith, doubt. Well, it's kind of the idea of, of Tall Tillich said that um, um, doubt is not the mm-hmm. opposite of faith. It's mm-hmm. merely a, a uh, part of it. Mm-hmm. Sub- yeah. 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 And so that was the idea is that they're mm-hmm. one and the same. Um, but maybe when the paperback, just it's easier to say if there was an ampersand. Mm-hmm. <coughs> um, Revolution, we all our services are free online if people want to listen to them. If they're in the New York area, we meet every Sunday at 4 at Pete's Candy Store. Then go to revolutionnyc.com. And you work pretty hard to help people who live in other parts of the world but feel that they're part of Revolution to connect yeah. through it through the online. Yeah, it's the amazing. Online the, online yeah. Sur- uh, uh, the online church is has is is amazing. Do people I mean, Skype in or what do you do? No, people just listen online. Now we're going to okay. probably start to have Skyping and different things like that yeah. because the more we get to know people and there are people who just consider us their church mm-hmm. and they listen online and I never thought that would happen. Mm-hmm. That was never my goal and it's been really neat and these people love their church and they support a church and they encourage me to continue to go on. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll say something, you know, like I feel like giving up. You know how you do sometimes. Yeah. You just want to get, and I'm very honest. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how I can handle this. And I mean, there was a time where I was actually about to leave the ministry and just go into uh. social justice work. And I got so many letters of people telling me that what I was doing was important, mm. but they supported me if I left. Mm. I mean, it meant so much to me. Oh, that's mm-hmm. great. You know, so it's like my community has kept me going and able to allow me to write books and, uh. and continue on in ministry. Yeah. And, and so it's... And you meet, I go all over, when I speak in the, all over the country, not as much as I'd like to, but when I do, I sometimes run into people and go, hi, I'm so-and-so, I'm a member of your church. And you go, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I'd love them to be in a community of their own, and I would love to see people build their own communities out of maybe yeah. listening together, and that's what we're trying to help yeah. do. I don't want to start any more revolutions by any mm-hmm. means. I, I'm not a bishop. Mm-hmm. Um, I can barely, we're unorganized, we're yeah, an organized <laughs> religion. I can barely run my own. So I guess that we're supposed to be ending now, but yeah, that's all the good stuff that's happening. And if people wanted to connect with that, say that website again? RevolutionNYC.com. Oh, and someone asked where I get my hats. Brixton. Yes, yeah, so it was going to be the final question. Brixton. I wanted to Brixton. Tell us about that. Where do you get your hats? What do you, hats. What do you, what do you this, mean? Well, this get? hat, actually, I, I got it. Is, this is Brixton a division this of is con- the Burlington Kango, Coat Factory? Because I didn't know there was Kango. any pistols. Now, Brixton is a really cool little clothing company, uh-huh. and I like these wear like these captain style hats, and they uh-huh. make the coolest ones. And so I just have on their like, Brixton dot com, I guess. And so whenever I get a newsletter saying that they've released new hats, I just go on and order a couple. Mm-hmm. And they all fit you. See, like I have a, uh, a yeah. larger head. You can just <laughs> well, order any Kangol, hat though. online and get it to fit. Man, well, no, man. but it, t- it took it, no, no. But I bought man. one. You are you, but are you the know luckiest person. I in the found world no. I found today. one of their hats. I found one of their hats at a uh-huh. store, bought the hat, and then I just yeah. ordered. Now, there has been times where the medium hasn't been quite a medium. It's been either too big or too small. Yeah. You have to send it back, or it mm-hmm. just sits on the shelf. Yes. So don't worry, Brixton. I never send stuff. Do you, when you order stuff, do you, do you send it back? Like about one out of five times. <laughs> Maybe if I order shoes. some bad or broken thing, I'll send it back. Yeah. Or L.L. Bean. I bought an L.L. Bean bag. Shoes, I and it broke. Shoes, but nothing else. Yeah. And they sent me, a, you know, I sent it to them, and they sent me a new one. So, yeah, I do send stuff back every now and then. Hmm. If I could get sponsored by, like, Brixton and like a jean company and L.L. Bean for my shirts, I would be perfectly, I'd be well off. I would not <laughs> have. have. you tried that? Have you, have you tried an approach with that? You, no, yeah. You should create an alter ego that is like your agent oh, that and contacts sh- those people <laughs> yeah. and says, look, hey, listen, I Jay ask. has this opportunity. Oh, available. and Shots like, Leather Jackets. We'd like you have you seen my leather jacket? Yeah. I mean, because I mean, it's yeah, not going to cost them much that. for a guy like you. You could probably get by with seven, eight shirts a year. Yeah, one jacket. I mean, dozen I got, pair yeah. of pants. One jacket. 20 hats. Four years, 20 hats. I'd be great. Come on. 
Come on, they'd be sick. And I'll be, I'll be, What's that going to cost? They can them? put sponsorships on it. I can just make totally. their logo that, really would, big in places. Yeah, and it would be it would be like just their samples they could send you. I bet you'd be happy with those. <laughs> yeah. The ones the guys carry around in their car. Well, I did, I did ask, I guy. did ask Shots one time. I'm like, have you guys ever thought uh, about sp- uh, sponsoring a pastor? Yeah. You know, I didn't get it here. An from. online personality. That's what you <laughs> yeah, that's be. Yeah, that's right. An online person, author. Uh, yeah, author and online personality. Jay I've Baker. just given them all free cultural advertising. Yeah, right just now. Bam. I mean, people are right now are clicking like crazy on <laughs> Brixton. Right. I can't remember the name Brixton. of it. Brixton. Brixton. I'm Brixton. Hats You're welcome, Brixton. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jay. 